And good evening, friends. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in again today to another edition of the Nintavonia Book Club and weekly review of books and stories. And uh, of course, a very important part of the show called uh, the story of the day. So, as is customary, we've borrowed the music to introduce uh, the program. And today's prog the music today you're hearing is um, uh, um, um, songstress uh, from Mali, um, Humu Sangare. Humu Sangare uh, is a fabulous uh, world-class um, performer and um, she's uh, produced a range of music and uh, this album uh, titled Humu uh, features this song called uh, Kayini Wura. And uh, let's just take a little bit of it more before we go into the nitty gritty of today's program. <laughs> So thank you very much for joining in today and I think we're going to have another fabulous event uh, talking about books and stuff around that. Uh, last week we got we again rounded up our uh, tribute to the memory of George Floyd and of course uh, we've seen a lot of stuff happening since then and uh, what we just hope is that uh, in due course in a matter of time we can see some change um, coming through in policy and action uh, to deal with um, uh, racism in uh, around the world. Um, so, the first of all, we need to we have this um, tradition in our program of talking about the day in history. So today is 18th June, June 18, and um, we try to uh, put the date in history with some literary work, some kind of book written or to celebrate uh, an icon of history or an event. Um, Today's in history today is quite unique because it celebrates a particular individual but also celebrates a, 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 an important event in history. Um, I don't know about you but um, not me, I, don't have, I don't have a head for heights so if I go above a thousand, two thousand feet um, on less than an aeroplane I'm likely to, to freak out. Um, but the guy we're talking about today uh, is a guy called, um, I think it's called George Mallory. Uh, John Mallory was born uh, um, in, I think, 1887 um, and he was a teacher, um, uh, went to Cambridge and uh, became possibly the first man to climb this, to the summit of Everest. Um, and this is something that happened in 1926 uh, before um, um, uh, the official conquest of Everest many years later. And his story has been um, written by in, into a book and it's on the page of the uh, Nitavoni book books page um, and it's uh, a book by um, um, Jeffrey Archer and the book tells the story of the for the birth the family life of um, 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 George uh, Mallory and how he went on to become the first guy to uh, reach the summit of Everest. Uh, there is speculation that he did touch the summit of Everest on that uh, climb, uh, but maybe he didn't. Um, but the story is so powerful that uh, it was uh, also a very powerful love story between him and his wife. And um, there is something that he said he was going to live on the, on the top of Everest if he ever made it there, dedicated to his wife. And I think um, it's a very powerful story to to read. Um, the book um, 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 also 
marks a, a historical point in, in, in the history of mountaineering and the, the conquest of uh, Everest and um, uh, such a major achievement um, in life. So if you go on the page, um, on the Interwoody Books page, you'll find the book there, In All His Glory, by Jeffrey Archer. It's a fictionalized, um, it's a fictionalized work. Uh, by different archer where it takes the story uh, into some different kind of territory but you can also get a, of course historical narratives about the story about the about George Mallory's life um, cut short of course um, because he didn't make it back from Everest so he, he did get to the top we believe but on the descent he lost his life and I think it was in 1990 something 1992 or so, that his body, his frozen body, was found um, with another colleague on the um, near the top of Mount Everest. So it is a, a fantastic story to to uh, to read. Um, so we we'll talked about um, George Mallory about today in history and a literary angle to it. So if you want to kind of note the date, uh, is it is the birthday of uh, George Mallory, the mountaineer and a university academic, and um, he this was a very fabulous um, life, cut short, but great story. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today, I really appreciate your time. Um, so, just as a bit of a teaser, we do have a, a guest coming on later on, um, and um, um, I will give a brief introduction to him of, of what, he, what he's done and what he does and why uh, he's such a, such a well-rounded individual that uh, his, his poetry is uh, also very, quite powerful. And I'm glad to say that we have uh, Jacqueline Waziri, also an accomplished poet, also with us. So I suppose we might have uh, some kind of bit of banter between um, Jacqueline and uh, our guest later on. So thank you very much for joining in. Um, so last week, before we, before we left, we talked about uh, the books we're going to use to chill for the weekend. And um, I did. I did. I remember bringing out this humble uh, book by Harold Robbins, uh, 79 Park Avenue. I don't know how many of you got around to reading reading it, or uh, at least finding where you can find one for later enjoyment. But uh, it is still there. Um, I'm still going through it um, bit by bit. Um, uh, but it's one of those books that um, you just kind of uh, really relax and enjoy it, and. Um, without taking anything too seriously. But again, like in every other story, it's always something um, contemporary to worry about, um, even though it is not uh, a book about uh, the suffering or the, the religion of women, the book is about a prostitute. So I think as we read these kind of books nowadays, the reflection on it is different from what was kind of acceptable when it was published. So. Make of it whatever you can, but at least enjoy it. Um, oh, Jacqueline, thank you very much. Uh, we 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 uh, we watching us from from Tanzania. Thank you very much. I um, Tanzania is my is my second home, so I have in laws from Tanzania. So thank you very much for bringing that East African flair to uh, to our show today. Really appreciate that. So now. Um, while I was trying to look at the uh, bring the program together, I was also thinking about um, uh, uh, something that's quite contemporary, which is um, epic literature. And um, I was trying to see that uh, very much we look to Western literature, uh, tra Western literary traditions to kind of see how we're going and what kind of books we're writing or reading. And uh, one of my favorite films, uh, what is the, the Lord of the Rings? And the Lord, Lord of the Rings is one of these um, stories about adventure, uh, about strange places, uh, strange people, and uh, it's uh, kind of come up with frightening, exciting, uh, whichever way you want to do it. Um, so um, we sometimes need to kind of uh, find out whether in our own for example, African tradition of literature writing, whether actually we have uh, those kind of um, adventurous things. And we do, and we do, uh, because um, 
I've been able to um, reach out to um, uh, different kind of genres and find out where these things are. So, and uh, anybody who's familiar with the literature of, um, uh, of some of the early African writers, and I'm, in particular, I want to really focus on uh, one particular writer in Yoruba literature. And um, this man, uh, probably mentioned it before, is um, uh, Dio Fagunwa. And Dio Fagunwa wrote some esoteric literature. And um, the, the, his books always started with the words Igbo or forest or jungle. And then the adventures that took place, um, uh, that took place in those places. So, um, for those who don't read or speak Yoruba language, I'm going to have bring to you two of the translations of Dio Fagnuwa's works. And um, one of them, one of them is uh, titled Expedition, I think I'm clear, Expedition to the Mountain of Thought. And um, I'll put this again on the, on the page afterwards. And uh, this book, uh, written, been translated by uh, a chap called Dakbo Ade Niyi. And this book is a translation, his own translation of Dio Fagnuwa's uh, book called Iyenikiridu, Ninu Ibo Ilegbeje. And um, um, this is um, a kind of um, a really adventurous story. Of course, um, the great uh, Professor Walesho Yenkadi Nobel laureate for literature has also done his own translation of uh, another of the um, sorry, of, of the Babas books, which was uh, called um, uh, which he was called the a Forest of a Thousand Demons. The reason why I pick out those two books is that when you imagine the film The Lord of the Rings, I can just imagine uh, a proper film you know, real major cinema, uh, 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 bringing alive the characters in Chief Fagnuwa's books. I'm sure there are some eminent people who are with us today. Uh, thank you, Lolo, for, for joining in, uh, who can probably explore the opportunity, maybe cooperate with, uh, 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 what was her name, uh, Mo Abudu, uh, to do all these epics and bring about uh, these literary uh, characters back on film in blockbusters. I think they'll be much more awesome than Lord of the Rings or any of those uh, fantastic fantasy uh, movies that have been written, have been shown on TV and on Hollywood. We have some real monsters, some real characters. Um, got people with, you know, characters with seven eyes and people with three faces and things like that. I can imagine what they'll come out in real life. Now, Having teased, having teased you with uh, the um, these probably frightening stories that you might come across if we can get them in film, uh, I think at this time I'm going to bring our guest on camera. I think um, Mr. Wale Adeniji. Um, I'm going to find a, a way of um, bringing Wale on screen. Wale, where are you hiding? <laughs> okay. Um, So, uh, let's have a look. Okay. Now, um, so, right. So, our guest today is um, Mr. Wale Adeniji. Um, Mr. So Adeniji is a lawyer by profession, also a behavioral therapist. And um, when he comes on, uh, you'll find that um, he also has uh, he's got a chunky beard. Uh, his chunky beard comes from, uh, 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 from his time in many, many years ago when he was a very uh, a famous uh, student activist and a man of uh, conviction in the advocacy of the rights of students uh, in Nigeria. And he, he was uh, at one time the president of the uh, Students' Union in the university. Um, of course, um, he's a, 
and an accomplished lawyer, arbitrator, and those sort of things in that. He's also a pastor, and um, but he's a man, uh, he's an obeying man. He, he he has a very rich, rounded view of um, uh, of what makes life tick, and is very much interested in people. And I suppose when you have a kind of complexity of personality, you end up trying to uh, put those things into um, some kind of form. Your reflection comes out of that in, in writing, prose. Um, uh, so I think I've got um, uh, Wally now. Um, so let's have find a way where Wally's hiding on the behind the screen. Okay, so I think I've and uh, once we can, once we've done that, we'll ask him to uh, speak a bit about himself, and then talk about the poem that he's going to read for our um, entertainment or enjoyment or for our reflection uh, tonight. Um, but as I was saying, um, in the literary, in in, in um, when it comes to that kind of um, um, when it comes to that kind of uh, activity, when you have a kind of complexity of worldview, but also you can find congruence, you find uh, simplicity in um, in what you are, um, in how you perceive and project. So we're waiting for um, uh, Mr. Adeniji to come on the screen, and then he can um, do his rendition. And then um, I I expect that um, there will be one or two questions battery. just to um, uh, to, to uh, give us some uh, insight into what is going on in his mind. So, uh, no battery. I think I'm, I'm going to have to employ an assistant to help me with my technical bits sometimes. So, <laughs> it'll take you from there. Uh, in, in the meantime, no um, okay. So um, I've got uh, my great friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Lulu, uh, with us today. Uh, Lulu is also uh, a, ward, a wardsmith, um, and um, um, he's uh, written his own biography, which is a very powerful uh, a biography about his own, uh, his own life, and it constitutes a lot about his interaction with people professionally and uh, in society generally. It's a fabulous um, piece of work. And um, I'll find it and I'll put it on the page. I think uh, one of the things we also try and be doing on this program is to um, get uh, biographies on the uh, on the radar, so we can um, uh, so we can get uh, some interaction around why people write write and uh, what kind of thing we can do uh, to learn or to learn from the. The lives of uh, the writers of biographies. Um, so uh, we're still trying to uh, get um, our guests to come online. Um, are they, uh, he's, he's based in Lagos and I'm in Milton Keynes. So I'm hoping that uh, we do have um, some uh, kind of symmetry of communication uh, so that you can overcome this um, um, technical hitch that there has to be. Um, so in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, while we are, while we are waiting, I'm going to go back to uh, this um, uh, fantasy books by um, uh, Chief Fagnua, which we we we'll talk about in, in in detail on another program when we have the time to focus on it. Um. So. Right. I'm still trying to figure out uh, why I'm having some delay with um, our guest today. But I think we are all looking forward to um, hearing from um, Wally and to do his um, uh, performance for us today. No battery. Okay. I don't know. 
no battery. Okay. Right. Seems like um um no battery. Seems like we have some kind of a hiccup there. And um I've been trying to uh figure out what I'm going to do now. Um, other other than to um, hang on for a, a short while to see what is um, going on in the um, end uh, with with Wally, uh, but I'm sure that um, once he, he gets it sorted out, it will be back on. Um, so, on the page I, uh, during the week, I put up a, a book there, uh, a, a new book, a contemporary book which is uh, called uh, Daughters of Inri. And Daughters of Inri is a book uh, written by um, um, a, a young, uh, one of these young art um, writers. And uh, he talk, it's one of those fantasy things it's about twins, uh, two twin, twin daughters who've had to do something or the other and uh, how they embark on their journey and the interesting stuff there. These are the kinds of, uh, it's, it's the kind of book that is uh, building on the foundation laid by Chief Fagunwa and uh, is uh, fantasy literature. And I think many of these books, which are, there are quite a few of them, written by a lot of young people, uh, many of them who live in, in diaspora, who are uh, trying to fine tune the literature of Africa and put it in the mainstream. For example, if you remember the story of Wakanda and uh, the kind of fantasy stuff projecting the African consciousness. And I think in time we'll find that some of these uh, books are going to be made into real awesome blockbusters because the, the narrative and the stories are quite fantastic. Um, so that uh, book is uh, titled um, um, The Daughters of Inri. Let me try and find, let me try and find uh, uh, the, the book and just have a quick chat Lentatory. about it. Um, so, it seems like... Um, it seems like um, um, Mr. Um, Adeniji um, no battery. Um, is uh, not uh, able to come on screen for one reason or the other. Um, so, but I'll keep keeping an eye on it and see what no happens. Battery. But uh, I think I was really looking forward to 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 hearing from him myself. Um, so. I have to apologize for that hiccup. I'm sure we were all looking for, forward to um, to that, but I'm sure I will be able to explain what um, has happened to that, um, to this communication um, hiccup. Right. So let me look at uh, this. Um, no battery. Let me look at this uh, the page and talk about that book, the, the new book, because what I want us to be able to do is to kind of uh, fit between uh, contemporary um, um, literature, uh, new writing new by new writers, especially writers uh, from, the African, from the African continent, and also to kind of find, fit situate this into um, a historic na narrative uh, thinking about the original Lentatory. African writers series, um, the Shinua Achebe's and, uh, um, and uh, Peter Abraham's, all those kind of people, and draw a story between what they're doing and what we're doing now. So um, let's have a look um, and Lentatory. look at this, uh, this uh, new book, I wanted to talk about it, which is uh, Daughters of Inri. Um, Daughters of Inri, no battery. Uh, uh, so Henry, um, um, it's a book by um, Rainy Amayo, and um, no Rainy, uh, the daughter is you know, uh, is an, uh, an epic journey of self discovery, and um, I think. It's, some, it's one of those books that I think I'm going to be recommending. I'll put it on the page so we can all kind of come Lentatory. around to it. I'll keep talking about that book, Daughters of, of Inri, uh, and I think maybe we can have a conversation around it properly in about a month's time, so we can give ourselves, give ourselves homework to do 
uh, for that uh, for that purpose. Um, I'm trying to see if I can be able to get um, um, Mr. Wale Adeniji on the screen to kind of uh, as we come to the towards the kind of um, at this point where we can uh, make a transition. But what I'm going to do instead is that um, I'm going to um, um, take about two minutes to give you another uh, uh, beautiful piece of music from um, um, Humu Sangare uh, while I try to see if I can contact uh, Mr. Adeniji and see what is there, what is going on. Um, so, let's have a look at that. Learn gentlemen i think i probably have to just uh I put a pause on trying to get uh our guest on the show today i know it's quite disappointing and um but there of course it's always some kind of good reason coming from uh um from uh our guest as to what has happened um but uh again as i said it's our first time yeah, trying to do that on the show and therefore we put it to uh baby steps but i'm sure that um we will get around to it and do it properly with better than it, than it, than you were expecting. But in the meantime, because we are all looking forward to watching to reading some poetry, I'm going to read some poetry to you. I'm sure everyone on this program today knows these poems because the poems call, call, come from a book, <laughs> from a very old book called Lengthy. Collected Poems for Primary Schools. So you can imagine uh as I'm you you know what to expect from a, a book of poems for primary schools. So let me find let me read the one that I found first, which is a very, very short poem. And it's on page 16 of this book. He says, Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the wall so high, like a diamond in the sky. How what better poem can you get from that kind of poem? So um, I'm sure you all know that poem. You can recite it, you know, even if you, wake, if you wake you up and you say, give me a poem. So that's the poem. That's one poem to replace the one that we're expecting from um, our great guy, um, Wale. So there's another one here. Um, it says, one, two, three, four. Teachers waiting at the door. Five, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Run to school and don't be late. Awesome. So let's have a look at another one and read one more poem. Um, I think we're going to read every poem in here. <laughs> look at that. 
Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. I mean, that is a beautiful poem. Um, and as we're getting kind of uh, trying to round up to this show, let me just find um, uh, um, another poem that time we can, uh, we can we can read to remind us of our youth. Uh, and this one, this one, um, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper. Went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and paper. Now, I think just reading that poem, it, it kind of reminds us of um, uh, the kind of this kind of uh, the literature or the literary work that, been, that were given to us by the colonial masters. So, for example, you looking at you, you you're reading this uh, poem and saying. Um, Somebody went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. How many children in Africa, you know, mend their head with vinegar and brown paper? What does it mean? It makes no sense to an African child in, in, in 19, 1945, 1960. But we have to recite it and, uh, and keep it in there. So there is something in every of these, um, uh, these uh, poems to sometimes... You enjoy what a, what a question i was thinking what's that about but um what's happening now are we writing poems you know new poems for night for african children uh for the black child and um, so for example listen to this one pussycat pussycat where have you been i've been to london to look at the queen pussycat pussycat what did you dare i frightened the little mouse under the chair um so I suppose London and the Queen is probably kind of a um, really uh, esoteric idea for young children uh, who are in black Africa, that kind of thing. Um, so it's um, one of those things that we try to do. Um, and I'm thinking, uh, oh, I'm going to um, read one now just to kind of uh, draw a, a cutting on today's program. Um, so, but uh, while I'm doing that, I need to make sure I pick out another lovely song from, um, uh, um, beautiful, uh, Umu Sangare. Um, I'm familiar with many of her songs, but I don't want to give you something too boring as we, as we finish the show. So, um, I'm trying to, uh, pick that out so that, uh, uh, I think I've got it. I've got it just the right one to sing us out. But um, two points from this book before we go, just to finish off the, poet, the poetic theme to our guest uh, today. Uh, um, let me have a look. Before, before, before we do that, let's do, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, uh, okay. 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 Um, Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. His fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. And so the teacher turned it out, but still it lingered near and waited patiently about till Mary did appear. What makes, the, what makes the lamb love Mary so? The eager children cry. Why? Mary loves the lamb, you know, and that's the reason why. Very simple, beautiful poetry. And um, there's also one poem there, which I think is a poem that is read, is read to, to babies about this time, children about this time, and it's called To Bed, To Bed. To bed, to bed, says sleepy head, Tarry a while, says slow, put on the pan, says greedy man, 
let's stop before we go. So on that note, I think we can say we've had some poetry inputs into our program today. And um, if you haven't had your supper yet, go and have your supper. Otherwise, you may not be able to go to have a good night's sleep. So on that note, uh, we get a sing out by um, by Umu Sangare. So thank you for joining in. Um, I hope that we can repay you uh, with a proper guest appearance uh, in the next edition. Thank you very much.